adversity, misfortune, troubles. All these words that we hear every day. And those things happen to us. The important question here is, how do we deal with those things? How do you overcome those things? Let me share with you a story that happened to me and what I learned from it. 1st of March, 2016, 7.40 p.m. I was sitting home with my wife and, you know, in March, weather is still okay, right? And I looked at the EC and then I started discussing with her. Honey, let me try the AC. If it's working, well and good. If it's not working, maybe we need to fix it. My wife had a different opinion that time. She said, honey, if the AC is working, well and good. If it's not working, then we need to buy another one. Well, obviously I said, yeah, sure, honey. But in my head, I was praying to God that it works. I put the AC on, we started to have dinner, and I told her, it seems like it's working. Five minutes later, boom, the AC blasted, two pieces, one piece next to me, one piece next to the curtain. Things start fuming. The fire was almost everywhere, and I didn't know what to do. My brain was frozen. Even though I'm kind of trained to do this, those kind of things or deal with the fire. But I didn't know what to do at that time. The first thing came to my mind. I told my wife to get down. Take the kid. One year old kid. Take the kid down and start evacuating and call 999. And still, I was still frozen. No one is prepared to face such situations. And within a matter of seconds, I was looking for fire extinguisher. <laughs> but I didn't have it in my house. I get down directly down. I got one from the car. <laughs> it was that small. And what I could do is only put that much of fire down. And I was standing looking at my house getting burnt. My heart was crying, literally. What I did after that, I started to evacuate. And I started to shouting, evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. I knocked every door and evacuated the whole building. And before I came down, I was just looking at my house, my flat that it just became like a charcoal. I didn't know what to do. And when I went down, I told my wife, did you call the 999? With a matter of seven minutes, they arrived. When they arrived, they managed to put the fire down, but nothing was remaining there. Every single thing was burned out. Name it, clothes, money, Phone, laptop, fridge, couch, etc., etc., etc. Nothing remained. And then I was supposed to have duty that day. I was supposed to travel to Munich. So I told my wife, pass me your phone because I lost already my phone. I took the phone. And I called one of my friends and I told her, do you mind to give me the welfare number? She was like, why? I was like, my house was on fire and I don't think I'll be able to go to duty today. She was like, oh, sure. I called the welfare number, the emergency number, and I told her, mom, I have a situation here. My flat went on fire. And I don't think that I can come today for a duty. 
she was like um um uh, uh, okay i'll call you back i'll call you back 30 seconds later the manager called me she knew me personally she told me hi ahmed what has happened i explained the situation and what she told me okay listen I don't know what to do now. It's pretty late. That's almost 8.30 in the evening. Do you think you can find yourself a place to stay in only for today? And we will see what we can do later on. And don't worry about the next five days. We will place you on a leave. I said, okay, that's a bit relieving. And while I was standing, I was thinking, what is my next step? What I will be doing, where I'll be going. Because simply, I cannot just call a friend and tell them, uh, do you mind if I just stay in your house for five days? Me, my wife, and my kids. That was kind of impossible. Some of the neighbors that offered me, but, you know, for the sake of offering. Then, within a matter of five minutes, one guy came to approach me. And he's like, hi, Mr. Ahmed. He's like, yeah, how can I help you? Who are you? He said, I'm the husband of your friend, whom you just called now. I was like, sure, tell me. He's like, listen, don't worry about anything. I got your back. You will come with me. You will stay in my house for the next week. And we will think together to be honest I had no other choice but to go with him this story has taught me very important lesson those are the pictures of my house after the fire that I clicked with my wife's phone I can tell you that you cannot figure out what was that literally you cannot tell where is the bathroom from the hall or the kitchen it just all burned out everything that night was eaten by the flames the old me was eaten by the flames but the new me was born that night I've learned two important lessons. The first one is the friendship. Let me tell you that one loyal friend is worth more than a thousand fake. Think about it. How many friends do you have? Oh, thousands, right? But then how many are actually loyal friends if you have a trouble or disaster whom would you call that's the question that we need to ask ourselves among thousand maybe one you would call maximum two which is i doubt the people are loyal to the need of you not to you. Once this need finished, even their reality changes. Ladies and gentlemen, choose your friends very carefully. The word friend, you cannot just call it to anyone. He or she needs to be privileged to have this title, friend. Remember, Choose your friends very carefully. The second important lesson that I've learned is the mentorship. You can't push anyone up to the ladder unless he or she is willing to climb himself or herself. Some of you might wonder, what does that have to do with the mentorship? But let me tell you something. The two mentors that I had, and I still have, until this moment that I'm standing here, 
they were my crunches in this situation that I was facing. The first one, Karim Alitr. This person has taught me too many things, has been to me a very good mentor in a way that the skills that I have learned help me in standing right here and until this moment. You might think that mentorship is only about certain thing in life, but the skills that I have learned from him actually help me to go through all these difficult times. I became an entrepreneur because of him. This person has helped me in a way to change the way that I'm thinking. The second person, his name is Muhammad Iraqi. And this person was the kicking start for me to start my journey in Toastmaster. I gained the confidence, the public speaking skills, I gain the skill to think on my feet. When you think about it, those skills that I have learned from those two mentors has helped me in developing myself. And when I got developed, I could say that easily I can pass any problems. And I mean it, any problems any trouble, any difficult time. In conclusion, those two things are the most important lessons that I have learned from this accident. The friendship and the mentorship. Ladies and gentlemen, choose your friends very carefully and get a mentor right now. Thank you so much.